Eon's calendars are back! For 2024, we have chosen to highlight paleo art from our episodes about human evolution, including one new, never-before-seen illustration of a famous early relative of ours. You can click the link in the description or head on over to dftba.com eons to order one. Around 38 million years ago, in a lush forest in what's now South Dakota, the ground shook with the thundering footsteps of a herd of giants. They were massive, standing about two and a half meters tall, nearly five meters long, and weighing close to three metric tons. And while they were nearly elephant-sized, they were actually more closely related to horses. Megaceraps colorodensis was just one of many humongous members of the group called brontotheres, aka thunder beasts, that lived around this time. But in the early Eocene epoch, their ancestors were only about the size of a border collie. Yet somehow, in the span of a mere 20 million years, species weighing over one metric ton would become a common sight. In fact, brontotheres experienced one of the most extreme size increases ever seen among mammals. And the journey the thunder beast took to reach such mega proportions from such humble beginnings forces us to ask an important question, one that paleontologists have been asking for more than a century. From an evolutionary perspective, is bigger always better? Everything big started out much smaller. This may sound simple and obvious, but the actual reason that size increases happen in animal lineages has been tricky for scientists to explain. In the 19th century, American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, of Bone Wars fame, wrote about the seemingly widespread trend in the fossil record of species getting bigger over geologic time. This idea became known as Cope's Rule. It basically argues that there's a constant gradual push toward bigger and bigger sizes as lineages evolve over time, with successive species generally increasing their body sizes compared to the ones that came before. And the idea was that this trend is driven by a simple principle. When it comes to survival and reproduction, being bigger generally comes with a bunch of selective advantages over being smaller. See, scientists like Cope assumed that being bigger meant better defense against predators. Or if the species itself is a predator, then it could take down larger prey more easily. Many species also fight for mates and territory, and you could generally bet on larger individuals winning those fights. Plus, bigger bodies generally have bigger brains, possibly opening up the door for a greater intelligence to evolve which can offer survival advantages too. So why don't we live in a world filled with giant animals today? Well, for most of our species' history, that's exactly the world we did live in. Megafauna were everywhere, from giant sloths in the Americas to giant deer in Eurasia to giant marsupials in Australia. And their absence today is not entirely natural. In many cases, it's likely that we had a direct hand in their extinction. But on the flip side, the largest animal ever known to have existed is actually around today, the blue whale. The most gigantic animal of all time is a modern one, not a prehistoric one. So does that mean that Cope's rule is actually true, and that it neatly explains why so many animal lineages, including brontotheres, reach such epic proportions? Well, not exactly. See, the so-called rule has been criticized for pretty much as long as it's been around. It can be applied to all lineages in the fossil record. Not everything ends up getting much larger than its ancestors. And these kinds of evolutionary trends unfold over tens of millions of years, and alongside many ecological variables. So trying to identify such large-scale patterns with any degree of confidence is really hard. You need a lot of fossil data and ideally a lot of computing power to find trends in all that data, something that wasn't possible until relatively recently. Plus, even for groups that do seem to fit the trend, on deeper investigation, it rarely seems to be as simple as a constant linear push towards ever larger sizes. Take, for instance, pterosaurs, the biggest things that ever flew. By the end of their reign, the wingspan of some pterosaurs exceeded 10 meters. But for their first 70 million years, their wingspan stayed below 1.6 meters. The upward trend in size only kicked in about halfway through their history, at the end of the Jurassic period. So it isn't as simple as bigger always equals better. But then how do we explain the thunder beasts rapidly increasing in size by orders of magnitude pretty much as soon as ecosystems could support such large mammals? After all, if you line up the members of their group in chronological order, they seem like a perfect example of Cope's rule. They started off as small, dog-sized species like Eotitanops that roamed North America and Asia in the early Eocene. By the mid-Eocene, more hefty species had evolved, like the cow-sized Paleocyops. And by the end of the Eocene, less than 20 million years after they first appeared, Brontotheres had truly earned their nickname of Thunder Beasts, a name inspired by Lakota cultural legends of giant beings that caused violent storms that shook the earth. Because those later Brontotheres were rhinoceros to elephant-sized mammals that had no equals on land at the time. And these giants emerged in multiple places, too. Asia had the chunky rhino titan, as well as Embolotherium, whose name means battering ram beast, for example. That's a pretty middle name. And North America had, among others, perhaps the most famous of the massive brontotheres, Megacerops, 
which has also gone by a few other names in its history, including Titanotherium, Brontops, and Brontotherium. Cope personally spent time studying fossils from across this timeline, even naming a handful of Brontotherium species himself. But did they actually obey his rule or not? Well, to figure it out, in 2023, a team of researchers published a new analysis of 276 fossils from 57 Brontotherium species, more than half of which grew to over a ton as the Eocene epoch unfolded. They took into account several other ecological variables throughout that time period, too like the presence of other herbivores that might have competed with them and carnivores that might have preyed on them. And they analyzed all that data using computer models to try and test three evolutionary pathways that brontotheres could have taken on their journey toward gigantism. These pathways included Cope's rule, that gradual sustained increase in size over time, and they also included two others that argued that body sizes grew in successive phases or just diversified without any overall direction. And they found that it was actually the third scenario that best fit the data. Because brontotheres weren't simply getting bigger with time in a selective one-way push that was consistent with Cope's rule. Instead, they showed a completely different overall trend, a trend in which brontotheres lineages continued to produce both larger and smaller new species as they diversified, with no particular preference in either direction. The reason why there still seemed to be an overall net increase in body size over millions of years was due to a process called species sorting. While smaller Brontothere species were still evolving, the ecological conditions of the Eocene acted as a sort of filter that led to them generally doing much worse than their larger ones over the long term. And the researchers think this was primarily because of competition. See, mammals that survived the extinction event at the end of the Mesozoic that had dethroned the dinosaurs were all pretty small. So competition in smaller niches was pretty intense as ecosystems recovered and mammals took center stage for the first time. And while Brontotheres were producing species with a range of sizes, Larger lineages generally found themselves occupying niches with less competition, so there was a benefit to being one of the first mammal groups to produce big and bulky species. This meant that smaller lineages in crowded niches were more prone to going extinct than larger ones, resulting in the overall pattern of body sizes increasing that we see in the fossil record. Instead of the Brontothere evolutionary tree growing only in one linear direction, it was more like the tree branched off in a range of directions, with the ecosystem pruning off the smaller branches, giving the illusion of a simple trend toward becoming huge. So for the Brontotheres, Cope's rule turned out to be wrong. And by the end of the Eocene, around 34 million years ago, Brontotheres of all sizes were extinct, probably as a result of environmental changes. So it looks like bigger isn't always better. Like so many evolutionary traits that we're tempted to point to as signs of progress or improvement, whether they're good or not all depends on the ecological context. And if deep time has taught us anything, it's that change is the only constant. So getting bigger and more complex may not be inevitable. But what about getting smaller? Check out our episode, How the Smallest Animal Got So Simple, or as I like to call it, Honey, I Shrunk the Life. <laughs> I don't call it that, but Callie wants me to say that I call it that. Also, we gotta thank this month's biggest deontologists. <laughs> Jake Hart, Raphael Hassa, Annie and Eric Higgins, John Davison Ng, Melanie Lamb Carnivale, Addie, Tony Dye, and Juan M. Become an Eonite at patreon.com slash eons and you can get fun perks, like submitting a trivia question for us to read. Yep, that's right, we're transitioning from jokes to trivia. I hope you're as happy about that as I am. <laughs> to get us started, what famous dinosaur's genus name means thunder lizard? Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> Damn, that took longer than it should have. Put your guesses in the comments and stick around after the blooper to see the answer. And as always, thanks for joining me in the Adam Lowe studio. Subscribe at youtube.com slash eons for more Cenozoic Critters. From an evolutionary perspective, is bigger always better? <laughs> Blake? No? 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 What did we just talk about? <laughs> this is dumb. <laughs> it's just this part. I'm going to be fine as soon as... <clears throat> The answer is Brontosaurus. I don't know why it took you so long to remember that. <laughs> it's like, what do I do for a living? But Brontothere, thunder thing, I don't know what thier means, but then the Bronto part, I got. What does thier mean? Beast, thunder beast. <laughs> okay, thunder, thunder thing. <laughs> Let us know if you got it right. <laughs>